Here is a small sample of the Kimberly shawl. I want to give you a few tips to get you going. First, we will work the fork clustered row. We will chain three and then double crochet into that first stitch. Now here is where it's important to pause for just a second. This chain three does not count as a stitch for this row, but this double crochet does. And on the next row when we are working back and doing a single crochet in the third loop or the horizontal bar, we will want to know that this double crochet is a stitch and it's very easy to miss. So what we will do is we will take our stitch marker and we're going to go ahead and put it right into that third loop. That way we know, working our way back, where that last stitch of that row will be. Now we will begin our fork clusters. To do this, we're going to work back into the same stitch that we just did that double crochet in. So we will yarn over, go into that same stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Yarn over and go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up another loop. Now we have five loops on our crochet hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through three, and then we will yarn over and pull through the last three loops. Now we're going to do another one. To do the next fork cluster, we're going to work it in the same way, where we're going to go back into that last stitch we just worked. So we yarn over, go into that stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, then we will yarn over and pull through three of the loops on the hook, and then repeat that one more time. So we will work our fork clusters across, and this gets quite easy once you get in that rhythmic pattern. I really like the texture of this stitch. Alright, so now we're coming to the last fork cluster of this row, where the second half of that fork cluster is worked into that last stitch. However, now we need to go ahead and place a double crochet into that last stitch we just worked. This way on each row we are increasing by one. So there's our fork clustered row. Now we're going to turn and chain one. And this is where we start to single crochet into that back bar. I still like to go ahead and mark this stitch just so I don't have to think about my stitch counts when I am working back and forth. It's just a good idea to mark the first and the last stitches of each row. Now I work my single crochets into the horizontal bar or third loop all the way across. And this is where we are going to be really happy that we place that first stitch marker. Because this would have been really hard to see sometimes, it can get kind of lost in the shuffle. So there is that last stitch. We can take that stitch marker out. And now here is where we increase for this row. We are going to go ahead and do a single crochet into the, to the top of that chain three from the previous row. So now we've increased along that side. And that's it. Now we will turn, do a chain three, and do the four clusters again. So as you can see, it's just repeating those two rows. We increase on every single row to give it that nice asymmetrical shape. And that's the Kimberly shawl. It can get nice and relaxing with those repeats. And once you get going, you really won't have to look at the pattern too much other than remembering that we need to do color changes. I really hope you enjoy this pattern.